Hi and uh, welcome back to, to my channel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed other movies. Uh, if you haven't seen yet th uh, them yet, then go and check them out as well. This time I'm going to introduce you how to uh, extend Padge, the Perl IDE, how to write plugins for it. In order to make it easy, we devised a feature which, call, which we called My Plugin. That's uh, an easy way to start writing a plugin for yourself or whatever features you would like to add. And we hope that uh, once you made them, uh, made the feature, made the plugin uh, good enough for distribution, then we'll package it uh, into some other name and upload it to CPAN, uh, thereby extending the whole uh, uh, ecosystem of uh, the IDE itself. So what you can see in the screen is uh, Padre already open uh, with one file inside, which is uh, the source code, uh, one of the source files of Padre itself. If you go to the tools menu, uh, here, once enabled, there are going to be lots of modules uh, listed. And there is a plugin manager that allows you to uh, uh, enable or disable more plugins. And then in, within the plugin tools, you will find the Edit My Plugin menu item. Clicking on it, it takes the default My Plugin file and copies into your private uh, configuration area and opens it for editing. Uh, it already has some uh, default uh, content in it, and uh, we're going to see uh, what's there and how to use it. So, uh, in order to use the My Plugin, you ha have to enable it. And that's in the Tools menu, there is a Plugin Manager again, and here you'll see the, the plugins that you have already installed. Uh, My Plugin is here, and it's currently disabled, so I click on here to enable it. Once I enabled it, the tools menu will feature the My Plugin entry, and there has an it has an About menu item. Clicking on it will show some information about the plugin itself, including the location of the My Plugin file. As you can see, it's in my home directory, in the .local subdirectory, etc., uh, in some subdirectory that just uh, makes it easy to add more plugins uh, right there in your home directory. The first thing you might notice is that um, it, once you have lots of menu items here, it, it's kind of um, dragging the mouse all the time, not really what you will like, or clicking on the on the arrow key and go finding your menu items. I would like to have a hotkey here. So normally a hotkey uh, would be uh, indicated as an ampersand in front of the character, uh, an ampersand in the text, uh, in the source code, and the uh, Within the UI, it will be an underscore. So if I press Alt here in the, the um, Linux and the GTK GUI, then you'll see that there, there are an underscore. So I can press T, and the here I should see an underscore under under the my and under the M letter. The way to do it is then I go to the plugin manager. The pl uh, sorry, I go to the plugin file itself, what you can see in the editor, and. Uh, the plugin name function is the one that returns the name of the current plugin, the name that it should be displayed. And here you can see it's the name plug my plugin. So putting an ampersand in, uh, in front of the M will make it um, a hotkey. Say I save the file. Obviously, if I come to the tools menu, this will this won't show the underscore yet. In order to do that, I'll first have to reload the plugin. In the plugin tools menu item, there is the reload my plugin. Clicking on it, have reloaded the plugin, and then if I click on it, uh, uh, you can see the underscore now. And on Linux, or at least in this uh, GUI, uh, if I just click on the menu item with the uh, with the mouse, then it won't show the underscore. Uh, but if I click with the Alt pressed and then T, then it will show, and then I can click on the M letter, and it will jump right to the actual menu item. So that's the first thing I wanted to show, but that's not really interesting. What's in interesting is adding more menu items, and here there is the menu plugins simple method that returns uh, a pair of values. The first uh, one is the name of the plugin, and then the, other one, the second value is an array reference with uh, basically key value pairs, the first element every time is the um, name of the menu entry, and the second one is a method call that will be called when the menu item is activated. You can already see here the, menu, the about uh, menu entry with a method call there, with a function call there. Uh, 
removing the the command here uh, will make um, the new menu item uh, available. So there is another menu item, menu entry here that will call this uh, method. So this is an anonymous subroutine, and within the anonymous subroutine, we call a method. That's one of the ways to to call it. Um, before uh, uh, using it, let's see what the, does this do. So uh, right clicking on the name of the function will uh, allow me to find the declaration, which is just in the same file, but still it's an easier way to jump there. Uh, here you can see the other method. What it does is gets the current object, then the dollar main will get the main object of the editor, and on that main object you can find several methods. One of them is the message, which gets two strings and will just give you a pop-up window. So let's save this file and then reload uh, my plugin. And then I have another menu item here, as you can see. Clicking on it, you get the pop-up, and as you can see, the other method, the second variable, the second string, is the title of this window, of this pop-up, and the first one is the actual text here. That's good. But you need to make the, some in, something int more interest, interactive. So there is the prompt menu item, the prompt menu, the prompt uh, method. The prompt method gets actually three parameters. Uh, the first one is the text, as in the message. The second one is the title, and the third one is a unique key. It should be a unique key. Uh, what this prompt will do is show you a place where you can type in some text. The next time you call the prompt, you will get you will get the same prompt, uh, you will get the same window but filled with the previous value already filled. So this key allows us to remember for each window to separately to, to remember what was the last value typed in there. Let's see how it works and reload the plugin, my plugin and the menu. Uh, and this already remembers because previously I probably tried to, to make it but to make this uh, video, so it already remembers foo, but let's say it, I'm called bar, um, and it says hello bar, because the prompt returns the actual string, string, and then I call the, the message method with the, the string here, and it will pop up, uh, provide a pop up with the text. Let's command, uh, comment out this again, to go to the next example, uh, which is um, showing how you can fetch the text from the current uh, editor, cur current file, and do something with that text. So the Padre current uh, class has a method called document, which will return the current document. Just pay, pay attention that if, this, if there is no current document open, there is no file open, then this will return an undef. Then you can call on the object, if there is an object, uh, the text get method, which will return the content of the current editor and then on that's just text, that's ju just a string with text. Uh, you can call length on it or any other uh, uh, function of Perl. It will return this time, there will return a number of characters uh, within the string. Um, and uh, on the document, you can also call the file name method, which will return the, the name of the file uh, that's currently being edited. Uh, and then that's it. Uh, I call the message method again, just to show the details. So. In order to show this, uh, reload the my plugin, and then they are activating the menu item. Show me, show you the the name of the the file and the number of bytes. The last example here the last example here shows you how to. Uh, manipulate actually the text. So again, uh, take the document, take the text from the document, that's the same as previously. But now we change actually this text, so we run a regular expression on it, uh, removing all the training spaces uh, from and the tabs from the each line, and then take the text and put it back uh, to the editor. Now in order to try this, let's put some spaces here at the end of the document of this uh, this row. Uh, let's uh, reload the plugin and then let's activate it. And it moved away uh, the location of the mouse that should be fixed in in uh, some more uh, code. But if I go 
down to the actual implementation you can see that there are no more spaces if I, if I try to go further in the document the spaces are gone from the end of the file so basically that's it uh, oh there is another thing that I can show here is um, what happens if you have too many menu items you might want to create a further sub menu so the way to do it is enable this part you can see that uh, a name of the sub menu and then inside uh, you get an array reference you put an array reference again with the same structure so he is the entry name of the entry and the anonymous subroutine to load it uh, now if I reload my plugin you will see that there is another sub menu item and uh, clicking on it will have show the sub menu if I click on this menu item it will give me an exception uh, an error message pop up because the actual method is not implemented the yet another method so that's it uh, showing uh, the way how Padre can be extended uh, quite easily uh, with the my plugin system uh, and once you can do that you can probably uh, package up uh, your plugin into so the uh, CPAN module and uh, we'll see your mod modules on CPAN. If you have any questions just uh, you can post it here on YouTube or probably better to come to the IRC channel of Padre or sign up to the mailing list and we'll be happy to try to answer your questions the best we can do. Uh, if you like the, the screencast and uh, the video please upvote it and please subscribe the ch to the channel so we'll see uh, that there is interest for, for such videos. Thank you and uh, see you next time.